If you want to save money, run a more efficient studio, and of course, do your bit for the planet, then pay attention to these nine tips on how to build and run an eco-friendly recording studio. Whether you have a small home studio or a large dedicated studio, these tips will apply to you. To kick things off, this tip is paramount in how you can grow your studio with a small budget. Number one buy second-hand gear. If there's gear that you need for your studio but you don't have the cash for it, consider buying second-hand. Whether that's a new microphone, a DI box, an audio interface, whatever it is, you'll likely be able to find someone who's willing to part with theirs for a heavy discount. And of course, not only is this better for your budget, this is also better for the environment because there are no new raw materials needed to build an, a new piece of hardware. If you're worried about used gear developing faults, there is that small risk but generally audio hardware is built to last. The, in studios that I've worked at, they're still using the same mics that they used 20, 30 years ago when they first opened the studio. And, and my gear as well. I mean, this, this DI box, for example, I've had it for about 10 years, hasn't developed any faults. Uh, I've used it for gigging and everything. So before you buy a new piece of gear, consider checking out eBay, Reverb, Facebook Marketplace, Amazon sells some used stuff too. You might be able to find a bargain and help the planet at the same time. Number two, build your own gear. Alternatively, you can make gear yourself, which is often a lot cheaper than even buying second hand. Now, I'm not saying you need to be wiring your own audio interfaces and, and things, but well, unless you're an electrical engineer, but I'm suggesting more straightforward DIY projects like this awesome uh, rack mount made with, with a piece of Ikea furniture or a reflection filter, for example, like this this one that I built out of a couple of old paint grids, some spare foam, um, and a, a stag mic stand mount. If you have some DIY skills, give it a go. You'll save money and you'll save on raw materials. Number three, turn stuff off. I find that in a lot of big studios, half the equipment will get left powered on 100% of the time. Uh, the, the computer might get turned off, but there'll be like three sets of monitors left on overnight, all the outboard gear, chargers, and especially with home studios, chargers are a really big thing. They'll get left on, plugged in, charging nothing but air. All that equipment whirring away overnight is wasting energy. Uh, not only is that going to cost you more on your energy bills, it's also going to mean your equipment's going to deteriorate faster. And unless you're using a green energy provider, it's going to mean that it's running off fossil fuels all the time that it's left powered on for no reason. Try to get into the routine of turning everything off before you leave your studio. Maybe leave a note for yourself. It'll also help you switch off as well, kind of putting you in that end of work mindset after a hard day of audio engineering. Speaking of green energy providers, if you're serious about reducing the carbon footprint of your studio, consider having a look, having a research of what energy providers are available in your area. We talked about not leaving things on overnight, keeping your carbon footprint down, but what if none of that energy usage actually increased your carbon footprint? I recently switched to a 100% green energy provider, which means that all the power that's being used, being taken from the grid, is being topped up with renewables like solar and wind. And it doesn't even cost any more than our previous providers, so if it is available in your area, then it's a no-brainer, right? Number five, sell or recycle what you don't want. Have you ever thrown any electronics in the bin? Whether that's broken, faulty equipment, or just obsolete gear that you don't need anymore? Well, so have I, but I'm trying not to these days. One person's trash is another person's treasure could not be more true here. Chances are whatever it is that you have no need for, even if it's damaged, you'll find somebody online on Facebook Marketplace or wherever who could make use of it. Whether they're building a, a studio with just vintage gear or they're fixing things up for a project, you'll likely find someone who will be willing to part with a little bit of cash for it as well. I sold an old broken mouse the other day. What does somebody want with a broken mouse? Who knows, but I'd much rather it be in the hands of an electronics hobbyist than buried in a landfill somewhere. It's another tip that will save you money and is better for the planet. Number six, build a home studio. If you're considering starting up a recording or mixing or mastering studio somewhere, you're thinking about buying some land or renting an industrial space, think about whether you, whether or not you could make it work at home. Maybe you're lucky enough to have a home with a garden that you can build an annex on or a spare room maybe. If you can make a space work at home, you'll be cutting down on the impact of commuting and you'll also save yourself a load of money. Number seven, 
avoid buying stuff that you don't really need. We've talked about ways of buying gear that save money and are more eco-friendly, but just not buying that piece of gear is by far the cheapest and greenest solution. Now I get there's some pieces of gear that you will need for your studio. I'm not saying don't buy anything, I'm just saying be mindful of how you spend. And this should be the case anyway, regardless of cost and environmental impact. If you're just learning the ropes of recording and mixing and you're not getting the results that you're after, it's likely that spending money isn't gonna be the solution to the problem. It's more likely down to your room and technique, which is something that can be learned for free. Number eight, remote recordings and meetings. Now, if you're watching this in early 2021, then you're probably doing this anyway, but it's still worth mentioning. If you need to meet with a band or an artist to discuss a project, consider if you can swap it to an online video call instead. Or perhaps you're recording a podcast or something like that. Most of these things can be done remotely and it will help keep your carbon footprint down. And even for recording, if you're recording music with your band and you all need to drive down to a studio, think about whether everyone needs to be driving down to the studio on, on all the days. Or if you do need everyone there, then if you can carpool, that will help massively. But things like getting practiced beforehand and maybe putting down demo tracks, if you've got the facility at home, you could always record a few demos at home and bring them into the studio. This of course depends on the setup and the skills of the band members, but if it is something that you can make work, it can save you money and bring your carbon footprint down. Number nine, low power equipment. When buying electrical equipment, consider its power usage. Now we all know we can save power by switching to LED bulbs, and that's definitely something I recommend once your old halogen bulbs have died, but it's worth considering where else you can reduce your power usage. For example, if you're buying new monitors, do you really need need the eight inch speakers or would the six inch ones do fine for your space? And again, not only will taking this into consideration be better for the planet, it will also save you money, which you can spend on more plugins. But seriously, try not to waste too much money on plugins either. So those are the nine tips on how you can save money, run a more efficient studio and do your bit for the planet. Let me know in the comments section below, do you do any of these already? Or maybe you feel like I've missed something off that could be useful, let me know. And as always, for more recording and mixing tips and tricks and tutorials, then hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.